in is Fabio Wardley. They were very close to securing him a pretty big fight, which uh, no doubt Eddie Hearn may talk about in interviews. Not really our, our place to talk about it here, but he was uh, pretty close to, to securing quite an interesting opponent for Saturday night. Unfortunately, it fell through last minute, but the opponent he has got in front of him, Kingsley eBay, he's a bit of a handful too, you know. This is, uh, this is no gimme for, for Wardley. He knows he's got to be switched on. But, you know, he's passed every test so far with... with to be honest, relatively easy, I would, I would feel. And, and for a man, you tend to think, because when you when you've got a guy who doesn't have a, a, any sort of amateur background, then it's not about how they are defensive because you know, some people can punch and a natural athlete, and he's a natural athlete, of course. It's what they're like under pressure because what you learn from an early age is being comfortable with punches thrown at you, not getting hit, punches thrown at you. That's when you panic. He doesn't. No, no he lifts his chin up a little bit, but his feet get him out of trouble. So you know, so it looks like he's making a mistake with lifting his chin up. But he's put himself so far away, unless they literally run into the ropes, which might be an option for some fighter to do, he's always in a safe place. And I think, so he's been a massive surprise to me, because I thought, and I have to be honest, I thought I liked him at, at the beginning of his career, but I thought he was going to unravel. I guess how far, how far can he go with that limited amateur background? But I honestly, I, way before, I thought once he goes against a, a half a test, that he was going to unravel. And he's proved me something wrong. He's been fantastic. And, and he's one of our brightest prospects. Basically, it's, it's got this sort of weird knack, which is quite, quite helpful for you. Vladimir Klitschko had it as well. Being almost that he's most dangerous if he gets clipped and tagged and a little bit, a little bit buzzed yeah, almost. Yeah. He, he's got the ability to just flip a fight straight on his head to stuff the danger out before it's even become a problem. But he got, he got, the, he got the face where. No, he, he just, his face doesn't give you any, there's no telling him at all. So he also looks nice to relax and you know, he's a good looking kid, you think, oh, you know, he's, he's got no substance in him. But he's actually a bit of a nasty bloke, isn't he? Let's be honest. No, when, no, you see what he's like, you see what he's like when he hurts you, you see when he knocks people down, there's a smile on his face. Like Josh used to have that in his career. When he heard them, they were on the floor, he was never happier. When they were hurt, like, you know, when he was winning, just the fact they were hurt made him happy. And Fabio's got a, I'm not saying it's the same as Joshua, but he has that little bit of bow the same sort of thing where when they're hurt, that's the only time you ever see any sort of expression on his face. And it's a smile. And that's a, that's a nastiness you can't teach, to be honest. Robert Hodgins on the pads with him. They've been uh, working together since day one. And uh, well, Kingsley eBay. The, uh, the opponent from Arizona, seven and two, and watched a couple of his fights. He's fought two of the kind of up-and-coming prospects of, of world boxing, and that kind of pack, Justice Hooney and Fabio. Of course, he's, he's part of that too. He's fought two of them in Guido Vianello and, and Jared Anderson. I, I thought he beat Guianello. It was over six, but he busted him up, he hurt him early, he cut him, and I mean, Guianello got himself back in the contest the last cup because eBay's fitness wasn't great, but I thought he won the first four quite comfortably. And like, against Jared Anderson, obviously he didn't win the fight, but he, he tends to run out of steam, but he's, he's unorthodox. He switches, he's compact, he's obviously heavy-handed, and because he does, he doesn't do things the correct way, he kind of pulls back out of range and stuff. Sometimes those fighters, you do know, I'm sure you've had a couple of them over the years, they're, they're, they're difficult to get a read on early because they don't do things that you're taught to, to defend and attack against. Well, you, but what you can do, and what, you, what you're taught to do, is, is read the fighter's rhythm. Yeah. And once you can read the fighter's rhythm, then if you're physically able, you've got it. But he's got an odd rhythm, this guy. That's the thing, when you when a fighter has no rhythm, the punches come from different angles yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and they're, they're a nightmare to read. So that, and that's where, from an I go back to the amateur days, the, learning the fundamentals early on help you because if you can't read the fighters with them, you, can still, you, you go back to not being too adventurous, straight jab, turn it from the hips, don't overreach, right hand, everything behind the jab. Don't hit with the jab, don't throw the right hand. You can't read the rhythm. And, now, and that's where you can think people like, you know, People like Fabio because they haven't had that background. That's always a you tend to think that's always going to be a, a downfall for him. But to be fair, he does he does the, the fundamentals quite well. He has that left hand low, but it's hard to read, and he has the reach and the height. He, he's, he's taller than what he looks, Fabio. And I don't know whether he, it's because he's wide, but he I always when he comes up, to, I know everyone's taller than me. When I get close to him, I go, oh. Yeah, he's about, yeah. he's about probably about 6'4", isn't he? Yeah, yeah but he doesn't see, he doesn't, you look at him, like, to me, he doesn't look that big. When no. you go, you go, actually, oh, you're bigger than what you see. Yeah. And I think that's, a, it's quite deceiving in that way. I think, I think you need to be, uh, to, to sort of have any chance of competing at the, at the top level, unless you're an exceptional sort of anomaly. I mean, Usyk's probably about as small as you can be, unless you're yes. absolutely oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 
Me cost. When you look at the giants in the division, the, the guys like Fury and Wilder, six seven, Joshua six six. He's, he's not as big as those guys, but he's big enough with the mobility, the head movement, the speed, and, and the IQ, and, and he can punch too. He's got kind of all the attributes so far. That when you, you kind of do that mental checklist of a young fighter that you're looking at, yeah. he's, got, he's got the tools to go quite a long way. And and I and I and the reason why I think he won't, you be able to go late into 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 fights, late, into late rounds, is because he barely loads up. He loads up now and again when he got you hurt. But that's obviously who doesn't. But I mean, he's always relaxed. So it's everything's body mechanics. So he has natural power because he's flinging. He's flinging the shots. He's ripping the shoulders into place. He's coming from the shoulder from the shoulder. He's ripping the hips into place. So he's not wasting any undue energy. Once you once you load the number of shots, it tends up the drains your energy. And you see that with a lot of big guys by round five, they're done because of that. Because they're trying too hard, and then everything's smooth and relaxed. And I think that's why. I think, yeah, carry the power late in the fights. And I think as well, a very good sign from some of the top fighters in the world. I mentioned it on Alexander Usyk. He, he's been called back to sparring uh, twice there. He's been out to Ukraine and done done a few weeks out there. Um, he's been in camp with Anthony Joshua, um, Derek Chisora. He sparred essentially all of the top guys in the country. Been in with Tyson Fury a number of times. And he always gets asked back, which is a sign that these guys rate him and they know they can't afford to waste their time with, with people. And, and that, that says a lot in itself. And it's good experience for him. And he, he must be durable. 100%. Because we haven't seen really... Uh, uh, we, the things we haven't seen from him yet in the professional ring, but the fact that you know, they'll, if, he, if he ever something hit him, he falls over, you know, he, he panics and falls over, they don't get him back. So he's obviously has some sort of durability factor, which again is another p potential box that's, that might be ticked. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.